Hi everybody and welcome to part two of our two-part series in creating stunning applique finishes. I'm Courtney Kibitza and if you joined me from part one last Thursday, we showed you how to create the artwork for applique and walk through that process using Twill Stitch Pro Plus. Um, that software will allow you to create a variety of sew files for any vector image and so if you missed that part of this series, you can always tune into it later. It's available now on stallstv.com under the live event section if you just click archived. We save all of our recorded live classes there so you can watch them back and that one's already on the site ready for you um, to watch after this. But the goal of this class really is to talk about different finishes and how applique fits into your business and giving you an idea if you're just getting started with applique um, or even if you're just expanding with it and wanting some new ideas, different prints and finishes and different styles that are available. If you're new to applique, um, basically applique uses a fabric material um, or a cut piece of fabric and creates a design sewn down to the garment. And the big benefit of applique um, for a lot of embroiders is not only the ability to create some unique effects and finishes like we'll show you here, but most importantly it saves you a lot of time and money in production. Um, particularly if you're doing a lot of large designs, maybe a full front design on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a jacket. Um, any of those large designs, you know, 10 inches, 12 inches for those large prints are a lot of, um, there's a lot of time tied up on them if you're doing direct embroidery for just those designs. And so using applique allows you to increase your throughput, um, saves you some time there, and obviously increases your profits that you're making for your business per hour as you're starting to push more through um, your shop. And so direct embroidery definitely has its place for a lot of logos and a lot of designs, but once you get to those larger graphics or you want unique finishes outside of just your traditional thread look, um, that's where you want to really switch more over to this applique, and so that's what we're going to show you a lot of today. And so, um, one thing about applique is there's a variety of styles that we're going to show you today. Uh, we're going to look at a poly twill, we're going to look at chino twill, and also some ripaway applique. And so, I think it's important to walk through and talk a little bit about the different styles of applique very quickly before we show you how to actually go through the process of sewing down the applique and the different finishes that you can create. And so poly twill is um, typically the one that most decorators are, are most commonly familiar with. And so poly twill traditionally is made of a polyester material. Um, and it comes in a material that's available in a variety of colors. Here you're seeing it in a two color design. Um, but with this specific logo, what we're seeing is a polyester twill that's been cut on either a laser or a vinyl cutter, which we'll show you here shortly. Um, and it creates your transfer design here. Now in addition to the poly twill, you may also notice another type of twill applique, or another type of applique material in a wool felt. This is also another traditional style. So we see the poly twill, and then we see this wool felt used a lot on jackets and for different styling on maybe hooded sweatshirts for schools or even varsity jackets and a few different markets there. And so that's wool felt. Um, both of those can be cut on a laser cutter or we'll talk about ways to get them cut for you in different services. Another type of twill that's really popular, aside from the polyester and the wool twill, is a chino twill. And so chino twill is a little different from the polyester base. It's actually a cotton-based twill material. So you'll notice it has a little softer nature to it, not quite as rigid as you find a polyester twill to be. Um, and it's traditionally what you see in a distressed applique. So when you're looking at those garments, maybe at Abercrombie, American Eagle, Hollister, all of those brands that have kind of that distressed look that we'll show you today that you'll be able to achieve as well. Those are traditionally done with more of a chino twill because it allows you to get that soft, airy, kind of distressed um, look to that cotton-based fabric. Also we see, um, and this would be an example here of what we see a lot with a distressed chino twill, and so it's much softer, uh, much more lightweight of an uh, finish on the garment with that cotton twill, and there's a couple of different styles that we'll talk through for this process. Um, now with the chino twill, another place you commonly see it is a lot of the times we see it at um, the fabrics that you're getting at your fabric store, so maybe Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby. If you're picking up a cotton-based fabric there and using that for applique, which you certainly can do, but you're going to want um, something that will cut that material, whether it's your scissors or a laser cutter or something that will um, take that very thin material and run it through. Those are the basic types of applique that you see mostly on the market. One big um, new style of applique, it's been out about a year or two, but continues to grow in what's available, is ripaway applique. And so if you haven't seen this finish, um, ripaway applique, and we'll walk through the process a little bit later, actually uses heat transfer vinyl or CAD cut materials um, and, and also CAD color materials to create 
a colored effect um, in the material. So we can use a glitter, we can use a metallic, we can use um, a variety of different finishes to get some unique effects using the Ripaway applique. And so this we're actually not using a applique material, which you would traditionally think of that as a twill product. We're actually using a heat transfer vinyl for all of these processes. And like I said, we'll walk through that a little bit later and detail out the Ripaway process um, later as we walk through that. But these are some of the basic styles and things that you can think about getting started. And so when we look at getting started, we'll look at two different ways you can do that um, today. We're going to look at using a cut system like a vinyl cutter to create your own applique in-house and actually do the cutting in-house. And then we'll also look at ways that you can outsource that. So if you don't have a cut machine, uh, whether it's a laser cutter or a vinyl cutter, and you don't have the capacity to produce these transfers, um, we'll talk about ways that you can get that artwork produced for you and makes it easy in the sew file process as well. Um, and so we'll head over to our first video. What I want to do is I want to walk us through the process of cutting your own heat transfer vinyl. And so when you cut your vinyl, essentially what you would have uh, before we start that video is you would have your vector image that you've created that we created in the first session in Corel Draw, CAD Works Live, Adobe Illustrator. And you're going to take that vector image um, and you're going to send that directly to your vinyl cutter to cut out your tool pieces. That's the same vector image that we used inside of our Tool Stitch Pro Plus software to create our applique finish as well. So once we have our artwork, the next thing we need to do is load our material into our vinyl cutter. And for that, we're going to be using a pressure sensitive poly twill. And so we'll go ahead and show you guys that video as I walk through it with you on how we did that. Now the pressure sensitive poly twill that you're seeing being cut out here actually has a pressure sensitive carrier on the back so it makes it like a CAD cut material or a heat transfer vinyl makes it rigid enough to run through a roll fed cutter and so once he cuts that out he can just simply tear away the extra material that he needs off just weeding it away from the carrier sheet that's going to create his applique pieces once we have that we're going to load our garment and hoop it onto our machine and create a running stitch like we showed in the um, software on last Thursday, you have to run a running stitch so you know where your applique is going to be placed down. Once you have that, you'll just position your applique pieces in place. Um, using a little bit of spray tack on the back of those will certainly help to hold them in place um, in the right position. And then we're going to go ahead and complete our sew. And so for this, we, were, we chose a satin stitch for our final stitch just to kind of give a, a stronger appearance that makes it almost look like a two-color logo our two color design on the shirt. Now the pressure sensitive poly twill has a heat sew adhesive on the back and so the nice thing about this twill type um, is you'll see some of the puckering that we're seeing in throughout his letters. Whenever I load that onto my heat press and I heat press it down that actually allows me to um, complete the application and reduces all that puckering giving me just a really pristine finish um, to the look that we're seeing there and so that's one of the cool things about um, being able to have a vinyl cutter and to do that yourself. Um, I want to launch a quick poll because I just want to see how many of you here in this class actually own a vinyl cutter. And so we'll launch that now um, or a laser cutter, either one. But I really just want to understand how many of you have the capacity to cut your own materials and cut your own vinyl um, and how many of you are maybe just looking for ways to do applique where you would outsource that part of it. Um, but if you're going to have a vinyl cutter, you definitely would want to purchase that pressure sensitive poly twill. And that's one thing I didn't mention with a poly twill. Um, poly twill comes in two different styles. There's a pressure sensitive and then there's just the standard poly twill that's not pressure sensitive. Um, if you're going to use a vinyl cutter, you have to have pressure sensitive, meaning it has that rigid carrier to pull it through its vinyl cutter um, and be able to give you that um, rigid feel that you need for any kind of roll fed cutter. Um, so did we go ahead and close that poll? That way we can see the results. Um, Karen, what are we looking at here for vinyl cutter or cutter owners in general? 100% of the voters said that they do own a vinyl cutter or laser cutter. Oh, perfect. So a lot of you are going to be um, having the ability to cut your own materials in that as well. So that's great. Um, obviously, using that pressure sensitive tool works perfect for those applications. Um, I do want to show one other application for um, cutting um, or outsourcing the cutting as well. And so when we think about what we can offer, um, what we can offer in-house is always great for custom cutting and quick turn times and so it works great to have those vinyl cutters but sometimes um, if you don't have a laser cutter you may be limited on the colors that you can um, offer to your customers or even some of the finishes and so when we think about distressed applique 
Um, distressed applique is one of those things where you would need a specific machine um, and, and a, quite an expensive one to be able to create that laser etched kind of distressed look that we see on the Chino Twill. Um, and so you can order that in a service and it allows you to be able to offer that look which is really popular for schools and different markets um, using a distressed or using a uh, custom cutting house like stalls to cut all of your applique materials. Um, and so really the big benefit of different finishes also having the ability to outsource it if you don't have the equipment, um, so if anybody else is watching this that doesn't have it or doesn't want to have the investment in it, it just allows you to not have to have that. If you don't want to tie up your vinyl cutter, maybe cutting twill, and you have some other jobs you want to do at the same time, you can certainly outsource that as well um, to a cut house. So I want to walk through that uh, video of what it would look like if you ordered that from a custom cutting house. And so one of the important things, and you're seeing Mark Marola here, one of our Stalls TV educators and uh, embroidery machine gurus, but when you get that from any word anyway, you're getting a piece of material, the applique that he had showed you, and also the sew out stitch. Um, and so what we send you if you're ordering a, um, if you order the sew file with your transfer from Stalls, we send you your sew file, we send you the, pl um, the chart so you can see how to sew it out, and we also send you the applique pieces. Um, once you have those applique pieces, you can start the same embroidery process that we just saw, and this time we're going to run a zigzag stitch for something a little bit different. Um, but you'll see whether you're cutting it yourself or cutting it, uh, or ordering it from a custom cut house, you're able to get that same result on the garment um, in different finishes and different types of twill. And so this is one of my favorite types, um, just with the any word anyway. If you haven't seen this, um, process using any word any way or cutting your own um, applique materials, you'll find that um, what you're able to offer is kind of unlimited. So you're, you know, if you go the any word any way route, you've got a ton of fonts and pre-sewn text and things that you can choose from. You also have options to go through the process where um, you would be able to send us your custom artwork and we could custom cut that as well. So once we have the same steps, placement stitch, spray our material with some spray tack, and we're going to run our zigzag stitch. Um, you may be seeing three minutes and 36 seconds for our sew time on this specific design. That's really where we're seeing the benefits of having this large full front design on this hooded sweatshirt um, as a um, complete sew out and applique instead of it being direct embroidery. You know, when we look at that design we just looked at with a standard word mark of stalls and a zigzag stitch, um, it only took us about three and a half minutes to sew out the entire design, and that's one image for our customer. Now the stitches, whenever you create those stitch files, and we saw that a little bit when we created them in um, Twill Stitch Pro and how many stitches we had, but it changes a little bit. So we're seeing um, that design specifically, I believe, had about seven, yeah, 7,000 stitches in that poly tool design. If I was going to take a direct embroidered standard full front design like that, you're probably looking somewhere around 30,000 stitches. The significant difference, and the main difference comes down to time. And so when I can do that applique with that zigzag stitch, and of course your stitch type will change how fast and how slow you can sew things out. A zigzag stitch is much faster than a satin stitch, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about throughput and being able to produce things very quickly. Um, of course that satin stitch does create a really cool two color effect, and we'll show that a little bit later as well. But just to kind of go through the cost of what we just saw there, so we saw um, any word, any way, if we bought that in a poly twill, we're looking at about $1.92 in our stall's name there, just a standard font. The hoodie we looked at in that sweatshirt or in that video was about $8 in cost. So our total cost to produce that, if we're just taking into consideration the twill um, and the consumables, so the twill and the hooded sweatshirt, we're looking at $9.92. Um, and so essentially we can make um, a ton of profit on that that we wouldn't be able to make with an embroidery machine. Um, we're selling it for $25 and producing about 10 per hour just in how long it took us to produce that entire graphic. We're looking at about $150 per hour in profit. And so when you compare that to direct embroidery where instead of being able to produce 10 per hour, I can only produce uh, one and a third of those per hour and how long it would take me to sew out 30,000 stitches versus 7,000. Um, and so being able to produce you know, nine times the amount of t-shirts or nine more t-shirts every hour, you can see how you can start to increase your throughput and just save yourself some time um, and what you can produce there. And so your hourly profit is more by being able to go the applique route. And so that's obviously one of the big benefits there of applique. 
Now for those of you that have vinyl cutters but um, want to be able to offer that distressed look that we had seen here in the Highlands example, this is a great opportunity if you're selling. Um, fall is just around the corner to schools or a variety of markets. So here we're seeing a two-color chino twill, um, just in any word, in any way, but you can produce it in a variety of different graphics. And there's a different, there's a, a variety of different distressed images you can get, but essentially all you would need to do is either send your artwork to stalls or select from their fonts and styles, and you can easily create these types of distressed prints as well, and things that may not be possible in the past. This one's one of my favorites. It's incredibly distressed. Um, surprisingly, this is what the kids are really loving, of course, for schools. Um, we see it still in the retail outlet. This would be a distressed option that's kind of the um, not as distressed, so you can take it as far away as you want or as close as you want it to go. And there's some different um, styles here, and so this gives you some ideas to get your creativity going with the distressed applique. And this process works exactly the same way. Um, there's no hoops or anything to run into. What we often see though with this distressed look is that people prefer that bean stitch. Um, they just kind of want that more simplified, rugged look to it. And so um, I've got another video I want to show you on just to kind of show you how easy it is to do the distressed applique. And so we'll cue that one up now. Um, now same thing, you would get your same piece of material as well as your um, design from stalls. And so just going to run our placement stitch out um, for our complete logo here. Now this, um, there you're seeing the placement stitch sew time, so it gives you an idea of how long it would take you to sew out your placement stitch. Now this is going to make the base layer or the bottom layer for my um, twill applique design. Once I have my complete placement stitch sewn out, I now know where I want to drop in my letters. Um, now if you're going to go this route, the um, Chino Twill Distressed Applique does have a backing. You'll want to definitely remove that sticky backing. Um, will help to hold it down in place so you won't have to spray it with a spray tack. You'll notice how it's all kiss cut together. So this is an important thing for two color designs. And so as we start to do two color layers like we see here, um, you're noticing how it's starting to sew out that entire design and the sew file was set up um, the way you would order it with your design from stalls would be set up specifically to show you um, or to run the full bean stitch through the two colors and the design. And so this makes multicolors very easy. Now keep in mind multicolor graphics will vary depending on what you're decorating or how you're setting up your artwork. Um, if you're ordering it from a custom house and it's being kiss cut or if you have a flat bed cutter where you can do kiss cutting then you'll be able to create two color like this here where it's one quick and easy sew. If not, it would be a multiple step process for this finish. Um, and so we're seeing his completed design there for distressed applique. Um, but it gives you kind of a unique way to start offering that to your customers. And so this is something that I think, especially right now, um, this, with fall right around the corner, they used to be putting on some hooded sweatshirts and some new styles of garments, maybe some tri-blend um, heathered uh, sweatshirts that we're seeing starting to come out already for fall and start showing this to the schools and different fan wear um, designs to your customers and getting it out there to them because it's a really popular look. And so that gives us um, just some different ideas for distressed applique and different profit opportunities there. So those are some of the basics when we start at standard tool and applique. Um, I see a variety of markets available for all of them. Um, there's obviously a lot of opportunity just in being able to cut your cost and increasing your time and just some of the standard finishes. Now where we get really creative is when we start to mix and match or we start to add in some of those heat transfer vinyls or CAD cut materials to create different finishes. Um, and this is where I see rip away applique really being leveraged throughout the full applique process. And keep in mind that any sew file that you have set up for any of these standard applique prints where you're cutting your applique or if you're um, ordering applique from stalls, you can still use those same sew files with all of this process. And so essentially you need one sew file and you can offer standard applique and I can also offer some of these really cool finishes that we're going to walk through. And so the rip away applique process um, uses a variety of heat transfer materials. There's a um, CAD cut glitter flake product that's the most popular and we'll go ahead um, this one, obviously, if you haven't seen, Glitter Flake has a ton of sparkle to it. Um, but I think it's good to walk through the video on how this look is created so you guys can understand what exactly the rip away process is. And then we can talk about some of the finishes and sales opportunities there. Um, so let's go ahead and roll that out now. 
Now with rip-away applique, what happens here is we're actually running out a placement stitch. Um, and so we start the same way we start with all of our applique. But now what we're going to do is instead of laying out my individual applique pieces, I'm actually going to take a full sheet of CadCut Glitter Flake removed from its plastic carrier and I'm going to spray it with the spray tack and lay it down completely over my design. So I want to make sure every area of that placement stitch is completely covered. And then I'm going to run my final stitch. Now as I mentioned in the part one when we created artwork for rip away applique, the important part here is that satin stitch. It's absolutely crucial to use a satin stitch um, to get your material cut completely so you can easily do the next step which of course is the tear away method. And so once the satin stitch is complete, we can actually tear away that extra material there. So for those of you that have vinyl cutters, this allows you ways to create some unique finishes. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, um, this allows you to basically be able to create applique in a no cut kind of way. And I'm just going to run out the final stitch here. So if you want to add embroidery to um, applique like this with rip away, you can certainly add it around it. I can do direct embroidery down throughout the garment if I want just to accent and um, create different design elements to the look. We usually find that mixing different colors of thread or different styles of media to create mixed media looks like this. Um, really just help the garment to stand out and kind of command that higher selling price. So just by adding that simple outline and the red completely around the T and the Titans. Um, and we set all that up as well in our um, sew file to be able to create this stitch for the Titans logo. Karen, while that's sewing out, do, you have, do I have any questions I can answer on camera? Do you need a sharper ballpoint needle for this process? Um, your standard needle will work just fine. Of course, the glitter material and as well as one of the other products, 3M Reflective, could over time dull your uh, needle a little bit just as the way it does a blade, but it would have to be a lot of high production for that. Okay, so once we have that step complete, you'll notice that Mark is loading um, that hooded sweatshirt with a heat printing pillow onto the heat press platen. Just like the material tore away from the outside to complete our applique design, um, it would tear away from the inside as well if we don't complete the heat application step, so we have to heat apply it. Now the reason I recommend that heat printing pillow is because that very, very dense satin stitch that we set up on there would have the ability to um, create some any even pressure between the material on the shirt and the actual sew on it. And so we find using that pillow allows that satin stitch to fall down into the pillow and the material to raise up so everything gets a nice flat surface on there. Um, and that even pressure so it's all a durable print. Um, and this will outlast the garment. It's 50 plus washes, all of these materials, as are all of the appliques that are sewn in. And so um, those are really the big benefits of this rip away process. Um, and so just to kind of recap it, so basically um, what you would do is you're going to hoop your garment, load it onto your machine, um, run your placement stitch just as you would set up in your sew file or that you've done for all of your applique. You're going to take a sheet of your favorite material, and so we have a few materials available. CadCut Glitter Flake works with this process, um, CadCut Thermofilm, CadCut Flock, 3M Reflective, and also Cad Color Express Print, which we'll look at here a little bit later for some different finishes. You'll take your sheet of material, cut it um, from the roll. If you're buying CadCut materials in a roll, you'll just simply cut it off the roll to the size of your design. So for this logo, for example, I would cut it, let's say, 8 by 8 just to make this graphic fit completely. I would then spray, remove it from its carrier, so I'm taking that plastic part off. You want to be careful not to directly sew that plastic part down to the um, garment because that could cause some um, weird edges underneath the thread where it doesn't tear away. And then once you complete that step, you're going to spray the back with some spray tack, place it down directly over your placement stitch, and run that final satin stitch. Once that's done, we tear away the excess and we have our completed design. And so the big benefit is it takes away a lot of the extra app, um, processes and applique where you're traditionally laying out individual letters. So even if you have the ability to cut um, applique or order applique in a standard poly twill, you saw that process with applique where we were individually laying out the Z, the T, the A uh, when we did that first video. 
with this process, I don't have to do all of that individual lettering. And so if I have a design that has multiple letters or multiple detailed parts that I don't want to have to lay out individually over my placement stitch, really helps to just speed up that process. It makes it really, really simple. Um, and so the glitter flake that we showed you is one of the most popular finishes. It allows you to get that really vibrant sparkle finish. So right now, if you're getting ready to print for cheer squads for either their warm-ups or their cheer uniforms, this is certainly a way to get creative with it. Another way to get creative with it is to use um, cat cut glitter flake and sublimation transfers. So if you've tuned in a lot to Stolfs TV, you see us feature um, sublimated glitter flake often. And so where we take a sheet of a white colored glitter flake, whether it be white, silver, fluorescent shade, and we actually make it the color of the print by using a sublimation transfer paper. And so you would just lay your white sheet of glitter, or your white sheet of glitter flake um, onto a Teflon coated cover sheet on your heat press, print the entire pattern, and then sew that out um, onto your, your print there. And so it creates some really cool effects as well for some stunning finishes. Also getting created with glitter flake, we can even pair it with twill. So I'm not just looking at the way to do this applique process with um, just the standard rip away applique. I'm able to actually mix it on top of any poly twill. If you're familiar with cat cut glitter flake, it actually sticks on any cotton or polyester garment. So I can essentially put it on any polyester twill or chino twill because they're both polyester or cotton based. And so I can get really creative with some unique mixed media looks there with the glitter. Karen, do I have any other questions coming in before I look at some of the other rip away fa fabrics? What is the difference between flock and felt? Um, that's a great question. And so there's, to the eye, there's not a huge difference between flock and felt. Um, let's see if I have one here. I can put them up next to each other in a zoomed in view. We're seeing this fury here is actually going to be the flock finish. And then somewhere here I should have a felt that we can kind of compare. So the felt gives kind of a higher raised um, appearance, a little bit more standard of what you see. The flock to me is more of kind of a faux felt, so it still give, they both still give you that very soft suede-like feel, um, but this one's more of a um, kind of a suede feel, I guess, than this one would be more of a, full, of a wool felt feel, but they both give you a soft finish. This one's going to give you more of a raised, um, thicker effect, where the flock's just going to give you that soft feel down to it as you're seeing it on the garment there. All right, looks like I've got all the questions covered. So that was the cat cut flock, so I was glad that you led into that one there. This is another material that's available with the rip away process, and so it gives you that soft kind of suede, almost like a felt um, look. So if you're comparing this to whether you want to cut wool felt or offer this finish, essentially this allows you the ability to maybe offer that same um, kind of look that you're getting with wool felt, but without having to individually place out the letters if you have a detailed design or if you don't have a cutter that's available also comes in a variety of colors that may be different from some of the shades that you're seeing in the standard wool felt. So it gives you some ways to expand your offering there. Thermofilm, which most of you are probably familiar and you probably see it a lot currently on your team uniforms, is another really popular product um, that we see with twill and applique um, materials. And the cool thing about it is it creates this, with rip away applique, this faux look. So you're seeing how it kind of picks up like a faux leather shiny appearance to the graphic and so it allows us to really create some cool effects not only to text like we're seeing here for some more masculine looks but I can even um, take design elements of maybe a certain applique logo let's say a football or a baseball or something like that and just make that element of it have this faux leather look and so it gives it kind of just a more premium real life feel to the item and to the garment and we can do that with glitter flake as well we saw how we paired it with um, other colors of poly twill to get a really cool effect. We can do that with this process um, and think about different ways you want to add different finishes like you do with mixed media and your heat press, even with your embroidery machine. One that I'm really, really, my, one of my favorites I guess really excited about is the um, 3M Reflective. And so 3M Scotch Light Reflective is a ANSI certified material that works for um, any organization such as uh, road crews, police, um, anybody like that, that uh, emergency personnel that would need those specific safety um, requirements and the reflective material. And it gives you the ability to offer a reflective twill finish. So 
a lot of the times what we see on these large jackets and sweatshirts is a finish that um, is large and oversized. We're seeing here big block letters in K9 unit. If you have an embroidery machine and you want to deliver a result to these customers, being able to put that on the back of a large jacket or a sweatshirt can be incredibly time consuming. In addition to that, it doesn't allow you to offer a reflective finish. Um, and so this gives you the ability to now offer a reflective finish to your customers in that rip away applique process. And just as a side note, if you're not selling to some of these organizations, um, you definitely should be. You should be calling on to all of your um, local municipalities and your local groups to be able to offer them um, either embroidery or even heat printing some of these different finishes and garments. And we have a ton of videos on StallsTV.com on how to use your heat press for those markets. Um, but this is also some great ways to use your embroidery machine for them as well. There's a lot of opportunities. I know every area has them, so you could even go within a 90 or 120 mile radius of your location and find those specific customers and, and sell to them with these ideas in mind. Lastly, the last one we're going to cover, and we'll have another video to explain this process, is the ability to offer um, matte finishes. And so that MHS design was a sublimated glitter finish. This one is just a standard matte finish. And so it actually creates an applique that looks like um, a printed applique material. So something that you would see um, at a Joann Fabrics or a different style, but you can start to create custom prints. So if I wanted to custom print a mascot logo or a pattern, um, specific to my school, I can do that. And the way this process works with Ripaway Applique is with a solvent printer. Um, and so we use a solvent, e a solvent or eco solvent ink printer like the Roland Versicam or Roland BN20 to print custom patterns on a product called CAD Color Express Print. Um, and so I'll show you guys that video so you can see how it works once we've printed our sheet of CAD Color Express Print just like we would with Glitter Flake and run through that process. So just like with all the ripway applique, it always starts with a placement stitch application. We'll then take our sheet of express print that we pre-printed, spray it with some spray tack on the back to hold it down in place once we get it down there. And for this, we just created a custom pattern and an, um, kind of an orange voltage pattern. But right now, patterns are really becoming incredibly popular with um, a variety of markets, whether it's tribal patterns or we're going to start to see a lot here in the fall or animal prints, or Chevron is still popular for a lot of markets. So whether you're selling to uh, maybe cheer squads and you're creating embroidered applique warm-ups for them, or cheer uniforms, this all offers you opportunities for fan wear um, and just a variety of markets, really. So once he completes his satin stitch with the express print, we're going to then just tear it away like we had done with the glitter flake process. And once he starts to tear it away, any little pieces that you're seeing there in that S, um, we'd go back in with a pair of tweezers. So you want to keep those nearby your press to go back through and pick away all those extra little areas that may have been um, too close. One thing to keep in mind, you're setting up your artwork for this and creating your sew files is to add a little bit more space in between your lettering. So that would make it easier to rip cleanly and you wouldn't have a lot of that breakage in between. Again, we're over at the heat press. We have our heat press pillow. We have our express print set at its time and temperature. So you always follow the same recommended application that you would for that product if you were just heat pressing it. So this one's at 320, 10 to 15 seconds. And we've got a finished design ready to go. So full color, ready to go express print for full color designs. And so it really just opens you up to unique ways to use your embroidery machine and your applique and really start to elevate what you can deliver to your customers with their own logos or their own custom designs. And so that kind of gives us uh, a cap here of what we're seeing a lot of the times in Ripaway or in um, a lot of these products. Uh, one thing I don't think I mentioned that I wanted to was just to go over some of the costing for when we're creating designs with applique. Let me get my numbers out here for this. Um, but with applique, I'll use this K9 unit example to get started. And so if I'm creating something like this with this K9 unit, um, what I'm pricing out here is a little bit different from what I'm pricing out for my poly tool material. Of course, I'm pricing out my um, sweatshirt and everything, but instead of being that poly tool material, I'm pricing out the entire sheet cost that I have for my rip away applique. And so for this 3M reflective, for this design, we're looking at about 72 cents in your material cost. Um, again, in our hoodie, we're looking at 
about $8 in our hoodie cost. Now keep in mind when you're running a satin stitch, it's going to take a little bit more time than a zigzag, so you want to work that into your costing structure and how many you can produce. I was actually able to produce about three per hour with this specific logo um, when we sewed it out, so we were able to get three per three per hour at a cost of $8.72 with my $8 hoodie and my $0.72 cents in material. If I sell these for, say, $45 to uh, a local organization, I would be looking at a total profit of $135 for all three of those hoodies or an hourly profit of $108 since I'm able to produce um, all of those in about an hour. And so that gives you some ideas for pricing and things as well for this. Um, Karen, do I have other questions come in? One of the viewers wants to know if that's on a single head. Um, this specific machine, yes, was run, or this specific design was run on a single head machine. Um, and so keep in mind as you spread it out across uh, multiple head machines, your cost would be reduced for your time and how many you can produce per hour as well. Okay, perfect. Um, so if you have any other questions, go ahead and chat them in. But we are getting ready to conclude this class. Keep in mind the part one, creating sew files, is available on stallstv.com. This one should be up in a week as well, so if you need to watch this back. We also have a ton of short videos on ripaway applique and different finishes available at stallstv.com, and we're always producing new content there. So I encourage you to register and sign up there to stay up to date. If you head over to the blog, we're always posting when we have new videos up on there as well, so that's a great way to stay involved. And don't forget, we always have our forum, so if you have questions on decorating that you run into, we love to hear from you there, and um, we love to answer questions there as well as you guys have feedback. Um, so th this has been Courtney Goodbitsa with Stalls TV, and thanks for watching.